Hi, this is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health. Um, wanted to do a video on female hormones for pregnancy. Um, this has been an issue lately. It's something I've blogged about. This is going to be a little redundant for people who have been following those, but I did want to do a special uh, video on YouTube for some of the people that follow me there but don't follow me as much on my blog. Um, and also to help people find me. that Because uh, this stuff really, really works. It's very simple and it's ridiculous that the mainstream has no real concept of all these very simple fundamental principles of reproduction and a healthy pregnancy and all those kind of things. Um, pregnancy is all about in a healthy pregnancy from conception all the way to delivery is all about progesterone and progesterone is pro gestation hormone it doesn't get much simpler than that now during the first half of your cycle estrogen is dominant and that's why you know when you take an estrogen pill uh, you are rendered infertile that's what birth control pills are that's what they do they keep the estrogen up above the progesterone keep that progesterone stifled so that you don't get pregnant but the progesterone when you go through ovulation your body temperature rises your sex drive increases and all those things uh, try to help encourage you to get pregnant. That's what it's all about, and that's the timing of the cycle. That's what it's all geared up for. Um, and progesterone, in general, is a healthy hormone that gives you your best quality health that you can possibly achieve as a woman. Um, there's a reason why you feel so great during ovulation, and go you know go through all that, all those positive characteristics that you display. Um, all attributed to progesterone dominating estrogen during that phase of your cycle. But the interesting thing about progesterone is that if the thyroid or the metabolism is low, the progesterone is suppressed. And estrogen and thyroid, they're kind of competing against each other. So if your metabolism is low, your estrogen goes up and it works just like uh, the birth control pill. Um, so your chances of, of conceiving aren't as good when estrogen is up and thyroid is low because of its impacts on progesterone. It's really not all that complex. I mean, everybody certainly has a very individual hormonal landscape, but the basic fundamental principles that affect estrogen and thyroid and progesterone and all these different levels, pretty simple really. So the name of the game when it comes to being able to conceive having a healthy pregnancy, having a healthy child, because we know that having high progesterone levels when you're pregnant really help to increase the size of the brain, um, all these different positive things that you want to have going on for your kid. You, it, you want to be exposing it to a lot of progesterone. And progesterone remains elevated throughout all of pregnancy. Progesterone even, this one's really going to excite you, um, it actually controls the elasticity of the cervix so it actually is a pain reliever and makes pregnancy a heck of a lot easier I know when I said the size of the kids brain is going to be larger with progesterone you were getting nervous there thinking it was going to be more painful but uh, passing that huge watermelon through there but it actually helps control the elasticity of the cervix itself so um, it kind of works in tandem there everything is very sophisticated with how our bodies work and, but the main thing with our body when it comes to a lot of things, but certainly with pregnancy and reproduction, you have to convince your body that everything is abundant and that it's okay to spare some nutrients, spare some calories, some calories to actually do all the things that need to occur for you to produce a child, bring it into the world, nurse it for an extended period of time. You have to really fill up your nutritional reserves and you have to convince yourself that there is plenty of food around, nothing's threatening, uh, there's no chance of starvation. And what are women in the world doing today and have been doing since their teens typically is dieting. Dieting, dieting, dieting. Um, and then they wonder why it's so hard to get pregnant or they wonder why they have to get C-sections or they wonder why they have so many miscarriages or they wonder why they have so many menstrual irregularities and they're losing their period. All these different things are very intricately tied to the metabolism and if you've convinced your body for a decade that food is in short supply and you're 
just pounding yourself with all these stress hormones because this is really the ultimate threat is starvation. That's what our bodies are trying to protect themselves from. Um, then your thyroid slows down. Our stress hormones slow down the thyroid. They oppose the thyroid. In turn, the thyroid allows estrogen to rise and progesterone gets stifled in all this. Um, if you take it to a severe level, if you're a female athlete doing endurance exercise and you're dieting really hard, you get really lean, you lose your period and you're infertile and you cannot reproduce. Um, so you're really trying to achieve the opposite of that, which means eat the food. No dieting, you actually want to try to eat as much food as you can. You don't want to be cutting carbs. That's probably the worst thing that you could do because carbohydrates are very important for reproduction. They're very important for stimulating the metabolism because glucose from carbohydrates is actually one of the main factors in helping the thyroid gland produce its hormones as well as the liver converting T4, which is one of the high, uh, thyroid hormones, into T3, which is the one that actually goes and does all the work stimulating your metabolism, going into your cells, stimulating the mitochondria to produce a bunch of energy and all that kind of stuff. So eating a lot of food really helps and it really works. Um, I know it's surprising that it's so simple, but uh, and for everyone of course it's not that simple, but for guys and girls who are trying to conceive and have a healthy pregnancy, the most important thing you do is eat as much food nutritious food as you possibly can. Um, by nutritious food I mean things that aren't in white powders. Uh, no, no high fructose corn syrup and packaged products and Oreos and Mountain Dews and things like that. They don't have any nutrients and your body needs to have quite a big nutrient reserve as a woman to carry a child for nine months and nourish it. Um, and if you don't have adequate nutrients to supply your child, a lot of times you can really have trouble losing the weight after pregnancy and develop a lot of health problems. I see that time and time and time and time again where women develop all these different problems because they become very depleted during pregnancy because everything goes to the infant first and your body ends up being kind of screwed up at the end of all of it. So very simple lesson, eat the food. If you want to find out more, go to 180degreehealth.com and I have a specific set of guidelines that is specific for raising the metabolism with food and lifestyle manipulation and that's it. And it's very effective for improving your chances at conceiving, carrying a healthy pregnancy, and having a healthy kid. Thanks again. This is it for me today. Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.